Hey Rifters and developers, uh, today I'll be wor talking about a uh, small plugin I made uh, called Custom Input Mapping. Uh, recently I've been work uh, coming to understand the input mapping system in the Unreal Engine 4 and sort of what, what the best practices are and uh, how to achieve it. And while the input mapping system is very flexible, um, it it's it's missing a few things in my opinion. Um, and one of those is to be able to pre-process your input or uh, add uh, input mapping to arbitrary uh, values that you get. Uh, maybe you want to uh, control something that doesn't support input mapping yet, or maybe you want to uh, do some pre-processing uh, taper or combine inputs before you actually put them out as axes or uh, key events. So in this case I'm just going to show you an example of how to uh, install this plugin uh, and to um, an example use of that. Um, so we're going to start off with a template project called CIM test uh, using the rolling ball template. Alright, so this is the rolling template and if you hit uh, play uh, and you focus in, if you play, uh, press WASD space or you have a game pad controller or you're using a touch screen you'd be able to control this uh, using the input mapping system. If you go into edit and project settings and go into the engine input you can see these uh, buttons and events being mapped uh, to jump forward as you can see WSD move forward move right and all of these show up in the game logic under the physics ball BP here you can see the jump the move forward and the move right and if we wanted to, for example, add uh, the ability for the Oculus Rift to be one of these kind of inputs, um, but without changing any of the game logic that we have done so far up here, uh, then we'd need to use something like the custom input map. Um, so um, let's let's go ahead and add the plugin. Um, so if we go here and we find our project in Documents Unreal Projects, you have CIM test and this is the root folder and we're just going to drag plugins folder from the download into the root and we're just going to relaunch the project and I believe we already have it open we should close that, there we go so this is a relaunch and if you go into the window plugins we should have custom input mapping right here uh, enabled um, so now that we have that enabled, uh, we can go into the edit project settings and into the input. And now when we try to add a new key or uh, axis input uh, to the move forward, uh, and we scroll all the way down, you will see all these custom ones. And in this case, we want to probably use the pitch. Uh, for move right, we want to use the roll so when you nod you move forward and when you roll uh, ear to ear um, you will move uh, left and right and we're going to scale these down um, by about 1 90th because these will emit the raw values and that's it for this now in order to actually use these we will have to uh, make it so that the uh, custom axis actually gets the uh, input somehow. Uh, in this particular case um, we're just going to put it inside this blueprint but you can put it absolutely anywhere uh, where you have access to the, uh, the desired inputs. In this case um, the head mountain display is available globally so we're just going to put it in this blueprint. And So in this case we want to first uh, we want to get the position and orientation and we want to break up the rotation into its axes uh, so you have the you know, pitch, yaw, and roll and we want to now um, be able to set these in our custom input axis that we specified the pitch and the yaw so we're going to type in CIM this is custom input mapping and we're just going to put set axis value and you can see for this function, um, there's an axis ID and a value. So in this case, we want to set the pitch. We set it to the value. We have an axis ID. Uh, 1 through 12 is a valid um, 
number and if you look at the little tooltip you can see that the pitch should be uh, access ID 10 and we're going to add another one and we're going to change that one to yaw and one more Oop. copy paste there Now, that we, now these actually have to be called in order for this to work. Um, so this should be updated every tick so that the access values are always up to date. So we're just going to go ahead and grab the event tick and connect these up in, in sequence. Uh, now if you did this, this would work, but the pitch would be very uncomfortable to use. So we we will actually go ahead and uh, inverse it so that when you tilt your head down you will move uh, forward and if you tilt up you'll move backwards and and we're also actually gonna add a float addition um, so that you don't have to look straight down it's a little bit uncomfortable for the test and uh, instead, we're going to look down slightly, like a 45 degree angle is going to be the uh, median uh, middle point. Uh, yeah, that doesn't look right. There we go. And that needs to be broken. And it should be negative one. Now, all of these have to be scaled, but uh, we already sca we're already scaling them in the uh, engine input. So I'm going to leave that be. Uh, the one more thing I would actually add is to check if the HMD is enabled. So HMD enabled. I'm going to branch this control. I'm going to use that as a branch. So we're only going to update the axis when the HMD is enabled. Otherwise, this 45 will always be in there and it will mess up your it will roll when you don't want it to. And that's it for the uh, blueprint. Uh, now, to make this a little bit more bearable, uh, we actually have to just change one thing in the components. Right now, the uh, camera is set to be uh, on a spring, which also means that uh, whenever you move your head, it doesn't move. And if you just take this under camera settings, uh, it will enable the Oculus Rift to move the camera around and your head will tank me. Um, and that's it. Uh, if you want to test it, you know, just go make sure you have a standalone because uh, Oculus Rift doesn't work in the Play and Editor. And this is without the Oculus Rift. And then once you hit and Alt Enter, uh, you can control the ball by the direction you're looking and crash into things. Uh, that's it. Um, now, obviously, that's one use case, uh, but you have to understand and remember that these are globally available, and they will cause you to emit also global events, uh, which you can, uh, anywhere in the input chain, you can pull these uh, axes and find out and use them. There are a lot of potential use cases for this. Uh, it's a little bit of an odd way of doing things, but I, I, I like the idea of having the game logic completely separated from the actual input. Uh, and that way your game can be agnostic to what type of input you want to add or change. And you can scale it, adjust it, pre-process it in such a way that uh, it will feel right for all types of inputs. With that, and then the game logic can remain exactly the same.